Hey friends, I'm back. I had to go get my big saw. Call this saw Big Blue. It's an 066 clone, Ultra Pharma. <laughs> it's kind of an experiment. I ended up replacing the muffler with the steel muffler. I had to put stainless steel bolts and the uh, dogs because they kept getting loose. The muffler shattered and almost fell in the engine and blew it up almost, but it didn't, thank God. But I got the bark box on there with the steel muffler, so now that's fixed. The decompression uh, is known to go out on these, so I replaced that with the steel decompression. And then I have a clutch kit I haven't put it in yet. This is a Chinese one from Holden Oak, surprisingly. I got rid of the Chinese spark plug and put an NGK in there. And then I have the... I got rid of the Chinese air filter and put a high flow, uh, max flow filter on it. So, it is piped out just a little extra, nothing too crazy. I had to do a lot of wrenching to get this thing reliable, so it really burned me out. I had to do a lot of work with the saw to get it going. I would definitely recommend to anybody uh, professional to not buy a Holtz of Armour or knock off James Oliver. They will not hold up. down on you in the middle of the job. Okay, so I got about a, I got about a half a cord on this link here. It's still really sharp, so I gotta mess with it. It's a triangle grind hand file. Some more bar on here, so the cord's faster. I also had to put a steel uh, a steel air filter in there, a steel uh, fuel line as well. These grommets. And I put a steel bar on it. And so far it's been somewhat reliable. It took me a while though. This, the last like 10 tanks I've went through this, it hasn't broke down, so that's a good sign. Uh, at least it does have the full wrap. I needed a saw on a budget, the full wrap bar, and this is the only thing I could come up with. Every time I get a used Husqvarna or steel, uh, it's real hard to get them for a good price, and then when you get them, they usually blow up. Oh, I had to replace this chain tensioner with the steel as well. That saw cuts pretty quick, it's super heavy, and it 
sucks on a lot of gas. But the anti vibe isn't that great on those old steel Pro 66. This one's pretty bad too. My hands go numb. Real quick, so this will probably be the last side I own that makes my hands go numb because I don't want to get very damaged. Probably lick and put another lick on these, but this fur over here is so soft. You know that fur. Okay, let's get into it. Hey, friends, thanks for tuning in again. This is Chris here. Today, we are going to finish up from the last project getting the giant dug fur logs to the woodsburg. Today, we are going to be bucking them up with an 066 clone Hulk Barma mostly had steel parts on it I had to go through the whole thing almost and replace it with steel parts to, to get it working pretty good I'll make another video on that but today we will be bucking up these giant fur logs here um, just for the viewers I brought my tape measure so this is the top of the fur where it's lit at the top and it's about Count the bar about 29 inches. It's a lower piece. It's about 29 inches with no bar. Oh, they're pretty good size. Definitely want a bigger power head on this project. So um, the 291 could do it, but it would really heat up that power head pretty hot. You want to try to keep them cooler, they'll last a lot longer. All right, let's get into it. Ah, by the way, this thing is 92 cc's. And I haven't started it in about three months, so let's see how she does. Got it fully choked. Gotta pump that gas in there. The top, so I'm taking the choke off. Hot choke.
here so that didn't go so well did it I um, like the first log I hit had some dirt in it and it definitely took the chain back a little ways but the rakers are still down pretty far in that thing so I was able to hardly skate by there definitely gonna have to put a new lake on the saw before I run that thing again um, I need to split these rounds over here, the smaller ones, so I can push this one down so I can cut the other side of it. And I'm just going to noodle all these rounds with the 066 with the nice sharp lick. I'll get that chain as sharp as I can and it shouldn't take me that long. I can break them down on the wood splitter. but. It's a job, that's for sure. If you just have to do a couple, it's not bad, but if you're going to knock out like 40 of these big giant rounds, definitely noodle them for sure. Okay, we're going to get into running the wood splitter now, get these rounds split up, and then hopefully on this video or maybe the next one, we'll finish up these rounds. Alrighty, we're going to start the 
rugged made 22 ton log splitter up with a log lift get it nice and warmed up and get everything greased down and we'll start splitting these rounds up that way I can get space for those giant rounds I can just roll them right to the splitter and both those cuts I still need to make will be right at the top once we get down here okay I um, this has been about a hundred probably about 130 cords or so I split with this machine right here somewhere around there 100 130 um, it's done quite a bit of work so far since I found it um, I had to make this hydraulic wedge for it these machines don't come with the hydraulic wedge but I did make a video on that just got to edit it on how I did that and I'll show you guys that as soon as I can um, but yeah this hydraulic wedge is huge I added, I added a really long wedge that way I could lift my four-way or my six-way wedge high enough so I can turn this into a single way and cut the wood that has crotches in it so this machine it's not really good at one thing but it can do everything so that's uh, what I was looking for when I got my first wood splitter. I wanted to be able to do everything. Or they're really fast and they don't have a log lift. Or um, the other wood splitters, um, Easton made and the power splits, all those things are, those things are, uh, takes a lot of work and a lot of grinding to get one of those machines because they cost a lot more. This was just a budget set up for me so I could get into the wood business and process some wood and hopefully um, up here in Northern California we get a lot of waste wood so a lot of it just rots and uh, the beetles will eat it up and we get more beetles so it's really great that we're able to do something with this timber before it rots out. All right let's get into it.
Okay, friends, we finished cutting up all those rounds. Most of them were pretty good. Uh, that last one was real naughty, so I had to use the one-way wedge for that one. But other than that, everything went really great. So now I can process these giant rounds next time I get out here. And we'll get to you on the next video on that one. Really appreciate everyone for tuning in. If you could hit that like, subscribe, and share button, I sure would appreciate it. We'll see you on the next one.